and the 19th chapter and the 6th verse. <clears throat> no, 5th verse. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. I want you to hear it. They twain, or the bosom, shall be one flesh. Everybody say one. one. The two of them is going to be one. As far as God's concerned, you look at a man and his wife and you see two. But God says they're both one. He says they're both one. Listen, wherefore they are no more twain, no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Don't take them apart. Amen. When God puts them two and makes them one, no man take them apart. Now I said I'm going to use a text, a, a text out of a context. Amen. And uh, so that's that. Praise God. In the fifth chapter, of Ephesians 31, and we have pretty near the same thing again. Now we lay a foundation and then we'll go from there, and you'll understand where I'm going after a bit. Ephesians 5, I think, and 31. Praise the dear Lord. And this is talking about a man and his wife too. All right. Listen. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and they shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Two shall be one. There you got it again. And if you turn to Genesis, when God created the first man and the first woman, you have it again over here. And it is uh, Genesis 2.24, thank you. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now that answers the question. Then two shall be one flesh. Now you got that, haven't you? That's us. You got that all figured out. Now if you get that figured out, you can figure out what I'm going to say next. Then two shall be one. And he said, don't let any man take them apart. Have that figured out? Understand that easy, don't you? All right. Ephesians 4, next time, and 4 and 4. Now let's read this one. There is one body. Now here's thousands and thousands of people, just one body. All right, one body and one spirit. Even as are called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. How many baptisms is there? That's what it says, just one baptism. Now, John 3 and 11, pardon me, Matthew 3 and 11, John the Baptist said this, I'll baptize you with water, baptize now, you with water, there's one that comes after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now, that's two baptisms if I know anything. Amen. Jesus said in Acts 1, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Amen. Peter said in Acts 11, 
He said, I remember the word of the Lord. How did he say that John baptized with water? But he baptized with the Holy Ghost. There's three times that two baptisms is made apart. Baptism of water, baptism of the Holy Ghost. And yet the, yet the Bible says there's only one baptism. There's only one way in this dear world of ours and in the light of what I've read to you tonight and in the company of his people, there's only one way you can figure that out. And that's figured out this way. God, when he put them together, he put water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Ghost as one, not two. And did you hear what I said? He said, talking about the man and his wife, he said the one. Both man and wife is one. And let no man take them apart or put them asunder. And I'm going to say that I don't believe that any preacher should take these experiences apart either. They do. Sometimes they say, well, some churches and some congregations, they make a little ado about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Wonderful to get the baptism. But to be baptized in Jesus' name, it don't make too much difference. And then you got it on the other side again. On the left side, you got it. You get you baptized in Jesus' name, and they say, there now. We'll baptize you in Jesus' name this fall. Well, you come to the altar this fall. We'll baptize you next spring and go to Harvey and get the Holy Ghost. That isn't the way it's supposed to be, neighbor. Jesus said, don't take them apart. Say it, don't take them apart. And uh, I just don't want to be guilty of taking them apart because the Bible says they're one. And they are one. Right straight through the Bible, they are one. Amen. Acts 2 and 41, it says, They that gladly received the word were baptized, that's water, and the Lord added them to the church that day. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost all the same day. 3,000 souls were baptized and added to the church in one day. And it takes the Holy Ghost to put in the church, and I, I dare you, no preachers up here. I wish I had about a dozen. I dare them to contradict me. Say amen. The Bible says in Corinthians we're all baptized in one body by one spirit. And the Bible says the body is his church. The Bible says that. Now you can fuss a little bit about the bride if you want to. Just fuss a little bit. I'll go along with it. As a type. As a type I'll go along with your bride business. And some will say who's in the bride and is this the bride and that's the bride. And you hear that all over a religious area. But brother, when it comes to the church, there's no, no need of anybody hesitating at all, backing up for nothing, because the Bible says over and over again, the church which is his body, not like something, not like a bride, not like a this, not like that. It says it is his body, the church which is his body. Now how do you get in his body? You're baptized into his body by one spirit. As I said, some preachers are anxious to get you baptized in Jesus' name, and I would be, and then it don't make no difference whether you get the Holy Ghost. Does to me. Yes. Praise God, it has to me for 40 some years. Hallelujah. I had a funny meeting in Gray Rapids a number of years ago. I was ministering in Upper Blytheville, and I definitely felt to announce a special meeting on Wednesday night in Upper Blackville. Special what? Who's going to be there? I couldn't tell them what was special. If they'd have said, what's special? I couldn't have told them. But I felt to announce it, and I didn't. And I come down home and I said to my wife, I said, I definitely felt to announce a special meeting Wednesday night in Upper Blackville. And, and, and I don't feel good about it. And she says, well, it wouldn't be any harm. You can announce it tonight. Like, uh, Upper Blackville will be there. She said, announce it tonight. So when I come behind the platform, made the announcements again, I announced it. Wednesday night, a special service in Upper Blackville. 
If you'd have asked me who's going to be there, what's going to be there, I couldn't have told you. And I had to get right in. Well, the only thing I knew about a special service Wednesday night, and I said, well, I guess there's a few folk that needs the Holy Ghost, so I guess I'll preach on that lately. And I went into the service, nobody there but me, as far as preachers. And I, I had the service, and in the service, a man and his wife walked in, and I hadn't seen him since he was a young fella. And I looked down at the Chessie Cat Green on, and I said, you're not fooling me. Amen. And I said, I'm glad to see you. I haven't seen you since you was a young fella. Growed up, married in the army, and living up in Ontario, and dropped into our upper bridegroom meeting. So I went on and preached on the baptism of the Holy Ghost to these folk uh, in Blackville that didn't have the Holy Ghost. Give the altar call, and a Peterson fella, big burly fella, come and knelt down right here, and Gerald come and knelt down alongside of him. And I prayed with this Peterson fella, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost just in a few minutes, and there he was, I fluently talking tongues, and I said, uh, pardon me, I said, Gerald, it isn't, it's Eugene, there's two brothers. I got them mixed up. And I said, Eugene, put your hands up. I said, here's a man talking in tongues right alongside you. He threw up his hands in a few minutes, God filled him. I looked down and his wife was down here, and I said, Sister, I said, here's your hubby over here talking in tongues. And I said, there's a place for you over here. And up to the altar she come. Then I went down and I put my arm around him and I said, Eugene, your wife's at the other end of the altar. Go over and tell her it's real. <laughs> and it is real, Chandler. It's real. It's realer than your chicken supper. Oh, yes, real. Praise God. They might have give you pork fixed up, but brother, this isn't something fixed up. It's real. And so anyhow, he come over and put his arm around his wife and he said, that's real, dear, that's real, that's real. And a few minutes, she's filled with the Holy Ghost. You see the about the special meeting? And so after the meeting was all over, I went over and shook his hand and I said, God bless you, Eugene. <laughs> and he said, you know something, the church that I go to in Ontario, he said, it's not necessary you get the Holy Ghost. I said, the church that you go to in Ontario has cheated you out of the best thing that God has for you this side of heaven. And that's why I told the story. I told that story to tell you. Anybody says you don't need the Holy Ghost, that's a great big cheat. And if he's a preacher, God bless you, he's taking your tithes. You, you shouldn't tithes. I wouldn't give that for the 10 cents in the offering. Tell you don't need the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Say amen. And so, you see, it, it, it is, praise God. And, and so they was added the same day, Acts 10, 44. Acts 10, 44, Peter preaching the Gentiles. Amen. While Peter was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Praise God. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Listen. Then Peter said, Can any bad forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? You see old Peter put them both together as one. The Bible said, Don't take them asunder. So he didn't. Amen. Here he is preaching. They received the Holy Ghost and talked in tongues while he was preaching, and then he called the water baptism. Because old Peter pleaded that both went together or they were both as one. Come on. See? So you got it Acts 2, you got it that way. Acts 10, 44, you got it that way. Acts 10, Acts 19, 5 to 6. Paul came to certain disciples and he said unto them, Did you receive the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, We didn't hear with them, we had any Holy Ghost. He said, How was you baptized? He didn't say, Was you baptized? He said, How? See, some people dare not say that today. How was you baptized? No, no, no. But I'd like to know how you were baptized. If you wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus by immersion, you wasn't baptized at all. Amen. Not scripture. You say, well, I was immersed. God bless you, many of the old stream driver fell off a log on the Miramichi River and went clear under. He was immersed and the bubbles come up. But that ain't baptism just because he was immersed. Amen. Yes, sir. 
And he said, how? And they said, we're John the Baptist.